What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle for a continuation of our Sunless Sea series. So this is one of those games that I always wanted to get back to because it was seriously one of my favorite games of 2014. I played it a ton in early access, I played it when it released, but there was just never space on the channel to get it in there. And so today is an especially fortuitous one because we are going to be playing Fail Better's Sunless Sea. If you've never played the game, I highly recommend it. It's an RPG in which you take control of a sailing vessel in a weird world underneath the ocean. Well, not underneath the ocean, I guess underneath the surface of the earth. And it's a weird world where nobody knows what's going on, but it's got like this weird sort of shared experience between all participants where like you don't know what's going on, but neither does anybody else. And so it's a very sort of schizophrenic experience. It's a very, very odd game and I can't quite put my thumb on it, but I think it might be the weirdest game ever, but it is a really, really good game at the same time. And so I highly recommend it. We're finally getting to revisit the game. It's going to be very exciting and fun. And so without further ado, let's start it on up. This is a game with a lot of reading, a lot of text and a lot of sailing and shooting. But I think we should be able to keep it interesting just by joking and enjoying our time here on the ocean. So without further ado, fail better games, Sunless Sea, let us start off a new game. Alright, so three decades ago in the reign of Victoria, London was stolen by bats. Now it lies a mile below the surface. It was dreadfully inconvenient for everyone, but it opened a vast black ocean to you. Welcome to the Untersea. So the game takes place, what happened is London fell through the earth and landed in this giant subterranean cave where there's just an ocean that goes on forever called the Untersea. And so now London is below the surface of the earth. It's inside this giant cave where rocks fall from the ceiling and all kinds of crazy stuff happens. Very, very odd place. Everyone feels like they sort of have dementia. Very, very interesting setting though. If you've never played it, I highly recommend Fallen in London, which is the game that this came from. It's a browser game that you can actually play at fallenlondon.com or something like that. I played it for a while, and actually now that it's on iOS, I need to start playing again. That was the main reason, is that I didn't have time to like log into a computer to play it. But now that it's on the iPhone, I'll probably go and grab it. But still, we gotta choose a past here. Enough's enough. Check out Fallen London. It's pretty good, too. Alright, so we get a room in the Blind Helmsman. Now we get to choose where we came from. We could choose to be a street urchin, which gives us a bonus to veils. If you look up here at the top, we've got different stats. You've got hearts, healing, and courage. You've got veils, which is actually your speed, stealth, anything that has to do with like deception, dexterity, stuff like that. We've got pages, which is essentially intellect and how much you know. You've got mirrors, which is your perception. And you've got irons, which is your ability to throw down and put a knuckle upside somebody's head. It's my favorite stat because I'm a brute force person. I like to play warriors when I play D&D. Stuff like that. Guys that kick the door down are just like, hey. How's it going? I've got a Claymore. And so that's probably what we're going to go with. But essentially, choosing your background allows you to get a one-time bonus to your stats that makes you very, very dominant in that strategy. And so, for example, the Poet is very, very good at Pages, which is Trickery and Knowledge. The Veteran is very good at Fighting. The Ordained Priest has really good Healing and Courage. And the Natural Philosopher has very, very good Perception, because that's a big part of being a scientist. If you don't know a Natural Philosopher, that's just an old-fashioned name for a scientist. That's what they used to call scientists before they were called scientists. They were natural philosophers and so observational skills we're going to be a veteran of the campaign of 68 just because we fought it's got the coolest backstory ever you fought in the invasion of hell that's right we invaded hell satan wasn't paying his dues we had to let him know that he was on notice and so anyways we fought in the campaign of 68 the invasion of hell we lost unfortunately but we did survive which is pretty cool so man, i'm gonna check some balances right there your loot and your pension have brought you a command or bought you a command so we're going to have a bonus of 25 irons, which is going to make us pretty scrappy in a fight. They will not trifle with you. You promised a job to your acquaintance, the Shady Cook. He'll do until you find somebody less disgusting. And so what you'll see up here is that we have a guy who has now filled in our cook slot. When you have people, so crewmen that fill in the slots on your ship, they increase your stats and make you better at whatever their associated stat is. So for example, cooks tend to give you like hearts and whatever's lined up down in here i mean basically your engineer tends to make you faster and he'll give you like some pages it's just everybody does something different you can get different crewmen they all have a quest though that's the really important part of this is that every single crewman has a quest that you want to accomplish while you're playing the game and so you will have the opportunity to get rid of crew later on if you want to i would recommend against it always 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 do their quests and they should leave on their own creating a space for the next person so that you can experience their stories the real reason and so if you really wanted to get down to pecuniary values here, if you really wanted to get down, like, sweep away the altruism, I don't want to help anybody in my crew, why would I do it? 
because they tend to have really, really big payoffs. When you finish their quest, it tends to be super awesome for you. And so the game is randomly generated to an extent. Certain things are always in the same spots, but some things move around, and that also plays into the way that the world works. That's one of the reasons why maps of Fallen London and places like that are so difficult to come by, because the Hunter Z rearranges itself. And so we got 20 Echoes, so that's basically $20. We got a little bit of cash. You don't start out with very much. It's very easy to starve in this game, so be careful. You want to make sure that your supplies and everything else are all nice and squared away. And our stranger quality is gone because we now have an identity. We're a weary soldier. Now we've got to choose an ambition, and this is actually the winning criteria. This is one of those games where at the beginning, you get to choose your own criteria for how you want to win the game, and I appreciate that very much. That's a cool thing because different players have different motives when they play games. Some players like accumulating cash. Some players like storyline. Some players just like getting out there and getting into fights and seeing things, and this game accommodates them all. And so we can look for our father's bones. Your father was lost at Z. You never knew him, but you've often dreamed of him. Find and return his remains to London for a decent burial. When we do that, we will have won the game. Fulfillment, we can get 100 tails, write a book, and retire. We can go for wealth, which is we know how it was to be poor. Now we want a mansion, servants, fine clothes, and maybe a family if they're not too loud and obtrusive. And then a private kingdom. So this down here is not in the game yet. And that's not to say the game isn't finished being developed. The game is in its 1.0 version. But what the developers like to do is they like to leave little teasers in the game right here because they still put out content for the game. They treat it kind of like a browser game or like an MMO. They just keep putting in content. Like every single time I log into this game, every few weeks, it's got new things to download that you can do. And so a private kingdom has not been put in yet but don't take that as the game not being completed the developers put these in here to tease you about what might be coming in the next patch or whatever so cool stuff right there we'll probably go for your father's bones because these ones are kind of freeform gameplay where you just kind of do whatever the hell you want and then once you get to a certain point like you have a certain amount of items so this right here once you have enough items to create a book you just do it or this one right here once you have enough money this one will supply us with a narrative which I think is very very important it'll give us something to work on when nothing else is going right and so your father's bones Find where he fell and bring him home. And so there it is. Last scrap of paperwork. Captain, in a regularity with the Harbor Master's office, they want to know what term of address do you prefer ashore? We'll go with Captain. All right, and that's it. Now we need to choose ourselves a portrait. I will more than likely go... This guy's got a pipe. Hell yeah, we're going with that guy right there. And then... I don't know what I wanted to name him right now, but we'll call him CPT... Hmm... Captain... Drizzledower. Ooh, that sounds good. I like that right there. Captain Drizzledower. And then he puts his foot up on the front of the ship with his pipe and he just smokes while things are exploding all around him. It's gonna be awesome. All right, your father's bones, a cold trail. One week ago, the Admiral grew incautious after one brandy too many in the Parthenaeum Club. He made references to your father's deplorable end and expressed his regret that he had not prevented it. You're not a member of the Parthenaeum, but their head waiter once served in your regiment. You meet your friend, the head waiter, and learn that the Admiral has not returned since. Perhaps he regrets his outspokenness. You'll have to find him in his lair at the Admiralty. So we need three levels of Admiralty's favor to get to the next part of our story. Should be very, very easy to get. The number one way you're going to make money and just do general stuff in this game is by sailing around and compiling these things called port reports. And so this takes place in what would be considered Victorian England. And so the colonies are still well and good. And England needs to maintain those colonies by you going out and checking on them and kind of compiling these spies reports of what's going on in various locations. It's going to be your bread and butter. There's a lot of other stuff along the way, but that's the one that you write home to your mother about. So anyways, there it is. Fall in London. So we got a couple things we could do. We could go for advice for captains. Not going to do that. I'm actually probably just going to sell that real quick. So inside of our hold, yeah, we have the advice for captains, which you could do right here is I'm just going to take this down to the bottom. This is the tutorial book, and you can actually go through here and read each of these if you want to. I already know more or less how the game works. So I'm going to bypass it. We're going to sell the book real fast. It's going to give us 50 echoes. Oh, wow, they buffed that. It used to give you 10 echoes. Damn. Okay, that's pretty cool. I'll take that. In our lodgings, we can read the morning paper, which I think is a very, very good idea. Actually, I should probably go back and explain this. So when we're inside any settlement, you choose a location, you want to go inside that place, and then from there you'll have a whole bunch of extra, like, random events that you can check in on. These tabs along the top will allow you to know what quests you have, your memoirs, your objectives, your memoirs, your memoirs. There we go. Your officers right here, we have a mascot, a comatose ferret. That actually sounds like the best kind of ferret because they get into trouble when they're all active and hyper. Sort of like kittens that never 
grow up. We've got our ship right here, which is Beatrice, the Lagaya class steamer. And so this tramp steamer has served well, but for a long, long, long time. Not a very good thing, but we'll try and get a new one in the future. Inside of the hold menu right here, we've got how much damage we can deal. We've got all the various parts for our ship, which we can swap out once we get a little bit of cash. We've got fuel. We've got supplies. You can also see these up here at the top. And so we've got the engine temperature. You've got all these good things. Be aware, we'll talk about these. So terror, it rises while you sail around. We'll talk about it once we actually get to that point. But in our lodgings, you should always stop by and read the paper because it gives you recent news. And so there it is. The Echo Bazaar, that enigmatic marketplace, has increased its tax on love stories. The traitor empress is forbidden singing in the street outside her palace. The anarchists of the Calendar Council have inexplicably dynamited a drinking fountain. The Ministry of Public Decency has located and destroyed a nest of gallbladder wasps. So we didn't get any bonus right there. Sometimes inside the paper there's like freebies and offers that you can get free stuff from. That's the first reason you should always check in on recent news. And then second, recent news is valuable to people who don't actually live in London. People that are out in the colonies, they always want recent news. It helps them feel connected to, you know, the motherland, the fatherland, whatever. And so there it is. We can visit our study, but we don't have one. We can rest in a room, which we don't need to do. That'll get rid of our terror, heals our wounds, and all that kind of fun stuff. Let's go to let's go to London. I think that's a pretty good plan for right now. So inside of London, we can go to the Admiralty Survey Office. Don't think we'll do that for right now because there's no reason for us to be there. Actually, yes, there is. There is. We'll get ourselves our first quest. We'll figure out where we need to go. And so the Admiralty's picket fleets and intelligent networks are long gone. The Survey Office pays Z captains a small sum for recent information. Ask if there's anything in particular they need. And this is basically the closest you're going to get to quests from the Admiralty. And so I would throw those out there. Speak to our agent here and return. We'll see that you're rewarded. And so they want us to go to the Iron and Misery Company Funging Station. When we do this, we'll come back. We'll get a big grip of cash. And then we'll also get something else. I don't remember exactly. It's been a while since I played last. But you always want to do these. If you're in the vicinity anyways, do them. Because they do reward you pretty well. And so there it is. We don't have anything else going on. Let's go back. We don't have any way. We could carouse in the wolf stack docks if we want. I don't need to carouse right now. Seems like a good way to catch a disease. And so carousing. Eh, we'll save that for later. And then we can offer passage to a tomb colonist. An immigrant will be paying to be taken north to vendor blight. Sounds good. It's oddly difficult to die in fallen London, but when a Londoner is too tatty and wretched to live, they wrap themselves in bandages and take a ship for the tomb colonies. Your crew cart these ones aboard in padded coffins. They'll sleep there until the journey is done. The tomb colonists is in your hold. Take them to the north to vendor blight and then sell them. And so there it is. Let's continue. I think that's just about all there is to do in London for right now. If we needed more crew, we could do that. If we wanted to hire a new member, so somebody to fill in in one of our officer slots, we could do that as well. But there's nobody available, so whatever. If they don't love us, we don't love them. Let's step on out. Actually, I wanted to buy some supplies first. Let's go back into London. We'll go to the shops, and I think we need to go to the provisioners. I was hoping we'd get a couple of free provisions. Unfortunately, I was not so fortunate. I think I'll probably take a little bit of fuel. We can more than likely kind of take the edge off of our supplies later on. But I think we should be alright. Let's make the run up to Vendor Blight. I think it's a really, really good thing to do in the beginning of the game because it does have benefits. Let's launch. Off we go. You actually control the game with WASD just like anything else. And so now we should probably talk about there's going to be a lot of downtime in this game when we're just sailing in the sea. And unfortunately, I don't have any jaunty like sea shanties or anything like that. At least not at the moment. I'll work on some perhaps. But for right now, what we really, really want to do is explore. As we find locations on the map, we'll get these fragments right here. Think of those as level ups. Whenever this bar fills up, we get a thing called a secret. And we can trade that for good stuff. Up here in the top left, we got our hull. We've got our terror. Terror increases. Let's see. I think I can... No, that was not what I wanted to do. That was an accident. I hit the F key, which made me actually use up fuel to sail faster. So instead, now we have a chance of our engine blowing up. It might not be good. Instead, what I'm going to do for right now... Ah, it was the L key that turns the lights on and off. We're going to dock for right now. And so we're going to dock at Hunter's Keep. We've discovered it. When this bar fills up, we get a secret. We trade secrets for stuff. Very, very useful. Or you can use secrets to increase your stats by one. Hunger meter is going to go up when it gets to this half point right here. You use up a supply. Terror is going to go up. If it's yellow, it goes up slowly. If it's red, it goes up really fast. That's going to depend on your light. So if you have the headlight on, it always goes up slowly. Headlight off, you lose less fuel. But at the same time, terror goes up very, very quickly. And you have to rely on jumping in between these little lights or at least staying close to land in order to keep your fear from going up very quickly. For right now, a hump of dark rock swathed in mist. Mm, a hump of dark rock sounds like just the sort of thing a geologist would love. Like a hundred other Unterzee islands, but there's a 
grand house, windows aglow, lawns impossibly green and lush in the fall starlight, raked gravel paths. You stand on the dock as the sea nudges the ship's sides, an unexpectedly warm breeze carries the faintest trace of lavender. Let's go ahead and reconnoiter the island. Plunging cliffs, soft green lawns, a well tucked away in a fold of the grounds. Anything else? A hump of dark rock. Oh, we gotta go down to the bottom. Ships rarely come here. Nothing changes, even the weather. The house is the heart of the isle, the house and the sisters, but the Admiralty may be happy to know that nothing's changed, at least. So we got a port report from this location. That's exactly what I was talking about. We want to ferry that back to London. We'll get a little bit of cash, a little bit of favor, and things will be good. Let's present ourselves at the house. Well, they must have heard your ship come in, so why hide? I mean, we could walk in the gardens, I guess. Let's walk in the gardens. The lawns are neatly trimmed, and the night flowers of the neath bloom here in profusion. You watch the hedgerows, but nothing comes to menace you. You can savor the peace. There is a pointed cough from the shadow of a potting shed. An angular woman in a maid's uniform, her eyes a peculiar sulfurous yellow, advances, frowning. She indicates the house, turns on her heel, and leaves. So now we'll present ourselves. A maid with a smoldering topaz eye shows you into the parlor where three young people... I guess she has two eyes. I didn't pluralize properly. And in the case right here, it's important to bring that along. It's a detail for the story. A visitor, the youngest cries. The next youngest chuckles, the eldest sighs. Do excuse the indecorum, she says. Visitors are rare. You're very welcome, and I am Cynthia. The noisy one is Phoebe. The cheerful one is Lucy. You're in good time for lunch. Will you join us? And so now we have a choice. We can talk to any of the sisters that we want. When you talk with the happy sister, it gets rid of a bunch of your terror, and it's usually a good thing. And it gets rid of your hunger, as I recall, so it might be a good plan. Additionally, I've never actually done most of the ones down here, but I wanted to test it. We'll go through. We'll cycle through one by one, and we'll see what we can get. But for right now, we're going to go with the sunny one. So there it is. Lucy, I guess. Lucy leans over and whispers to you confidentially a complex story about a butler, a pig, and an inheritance. They don't follow all the details of the plot, but somehow the pig ends up in an attic and the butler in a vicar's bed. Candles flicker, dishes enter and leave, and the wind butts gently at the window panes, but by the time the plum pudding arrives, you're as cheerful as you've been in months. So we lost 20 hunger, we got one gods of the Z, stone's attention, we got one free supply, and we are now acquainted with the sisters of Hunter's Keep. Time to leave. And so this is how the whole game functions. You just have little adventures like that. That's pretty much it. Like, you go to locations, interesting things happen. Sometimes they give you quests. You'll have to bring back certain things or get certain things for other people. Very, very cool little things available in every single corner of the game. And so if you're into things, if you're pulling a Trevor Phillips here, it's definitely the sort of game that I think you'll probably be into. It's a meandering game. It's not a game where you're meant to play perfectly. You're supposed to just, like, wander around and have a good time. We should probably make our way back to the light very, very quickly. We do sail slowly. And so I haven't decided exactly how I want to deal with that situation just yet within the confines of the game because there is a lot of downtime where we kind of just like do our thing. However, there's something about the sailing that is an intrinsic part of the game too where you're not quite sure where you're going or what you're looking for. So as you can see it went green right there because we're next to one of these lights with our light on. I should be able to turn this off right here. And if we stay close to the shore, we should still be alright. And so we just want to follow along the shore, make sure the terror stays nice and low, because this is cumulative. Once it gets too high, it can become problematic. We'll toggle on the lights for a minute till our terror goes down, make sure that our fuel usage doesn't get too out of control. Going past Carissa's Point and Hornman's Stag. Horny Man Stag, hooray. And then up to the top. We also probably want to unlock this over here. I don't know, they got some kind of... Stop that! My cat is licking my leg right now. It's the weirdest thing on earth. Like, stop that, stop that right now. I know that my legs are salty, and you haven't gotten enough iodine today, but I will not be, I don't know, your Flintstone, your human Flintstone's vitamin. All right, so we'll turn that off now that our terror is at the bottom, and we'll park it up right here. And so the trouble with Tomb Colonists, you brought this decaying emigrant north, now what? Your passenger has been drinking. Ahoy, she chortles. Defend yourself. She launches a tipsy assault. Your crew hang back chuckling. Thanks, crew. So we've got a straightforward challenge. They took the irons right there at the beginning of the game, or we took the irons, so we should be able to fight the tomb colonists very, very easily. Tomb colonists have a lifetime of bitter experience. Some of them are the deadliest combatants under the earth. Possibly this one is when she isn't drunk quite, or when she hasn't drunk quite so much run. I apologize. I may stumble over the words. This font is very, very small, and my screen is very, very large, and so I'm actually having to like lean over and squint to see it. You'll never know. She salutes you, laughing after you disarm her. Good fight. She spines, then staggers backwards and falls over the side. 
You never do find out what happened to her, but at least you have her rather magnificent cavalry saber and her belongings. And so we got two supplies from that. We succeeded in a challenge. We got one outlandish artifact, so we can be like, Outlander, and wear it on our head if we wanted to. The outlandish artifact can be used for a couple different things. I'll probably sit on it for a while. Hopefully it doesn't break from my body weight. No, I tend to hold on to things in this game because you never know when you're going to need that weird, obscure item. Items tend to be very, very rare in this game. Things like outlandish artifacts, and like, there's also these things that look like diamonds. There's a lot of weird items in this game, and you can sell them off the moment you get them for a bunch of cash. Or, you can hold on to them for a weird situation where you need it. Now, I may sell this one because we need an infusion of cash in order to keep our business up and running. So that we can explore the map on like a full stomach. But, if I get later ones, I may just keep them in the hold until we need them. So, there it is. There's also the downside to that is if you hold on to things for too long, you may die before you get to use them. This game is kind of a roguelike, in a sense. So, anyways, another event done. On deck, you can hear the sound that a thousand bandaged dead make as they shuffle and cough. It's something like the world's most restless concert audience or the world's most plague-ridden cathedral. And so we can get a dusty glass of wine if we have 25 terror. We can go with Explore Vetter Light. We can visit the first Curator. That's actually a new quest that they added when the game came out, and it's a very, very interesting one. It's one of the main storylines. There are kind of like subtexts, and then there are main texts. This is one of the big ones. If you complete this quest, you are going to be stupidly rich. So anyways, Gather Gossip. So that's going to be our getting our port report. And then the last Tour Operator, which looks like... We have to do a whole bunch of prerequisite stuff. So we need 12 supplies... So it appears as though we lose 12 supplies, and then we get 12 tomb colonists, and we take them to three separate locations, and I've actually never seen this one right here, so this might be something new that's actually been added since the last time I played the game, maybe two or three months ago. I think we'll start by exploring, so let's gather some gossip. On deck, or never mind, along the coast of the Unterzee, it's remarkably hard to die. The decrepit nearly dead who leave London become tomb colonists and settle here in bandaged peace. But they don't give up their ties to home or their politics. You gather a hall of complex clues, enough to keep your contacts in London interested. Alright, and then we'll also explore Vetter Blight a little bit. Here they favor candlelight over gaslight. The shadows are swagged like cobwebs. Well, I like my cobwebs with a little bit of swag. Put a big bling necklace on them that rotates. The tomb colonists stand still enough to be mistaken for sculpture until they laugh or cough. One building in three seems to be abandoned. A little chapel stands alone. You poke your head through the door. The walls are a deep red, just like scarlet. A ruby-tinted window at the back glows with a steady light. An electric lamp behind the glass? Rare and expensive, but this is no gaslight. No one is here, and yet you have the sensation that only a moment ago somebody must have been. We could drop a coin into the offering and pray to the power of the place and find out what it might be. If we had good mirrors, we could search the place. We don't. It's a 50-50, and something bad might happen when we do it. Do we want to make an offering? I think we can only do one of these two. Make an offering with half-familiar rights, so we're going to have unaccountably peckish. I think if you're a vampire or something like that, you can make this happen. I don't know, everybody. Which one should we do? Should we search the place? 50-50? Or we can just make an offering of one echo. Let's search the place. Let's be ballsy. A hungered. There is an altar, a block of basalt, and there are pews, a pulpit, no Bibles, no hymn books. The stained glass window is the red of cochineal. An inscription on the lintel of the door reads, For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. And that is all. We succeeded in a mirror's challenge. We gained one terror from the situation. Everyone is eager to leave and no one looks back. However, we did get 20 fragments from it, which... Not bad. Not too bad. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here for the first episode of Sunless Sea. I will see you all next time. Hi diddly doodly, everybody!